Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So a couple weeks ago I did a review of this device here, which is called the Super Console X Mini PC. Now this little package is pretty dang expensive. Altogether it's $400, which includes the mini PC, an external hard drive, and a controller. And as I discussed in that video, there are cheaper ways of putting together an emulation system like this. For example, you could buy your own mini PC and then load it all up yourself. And while that takes a little bit more work, you can save a lot of money in the long run. So guess what? That's what we're going to do today. We're going to take a mini PC, load it up with Bodicera, and then put our own games onto it. Now this concept of running retro games on a mini PC like this is probably one of the most diverse and adaptable setups that you could ever use. Because instead of being tied to one specific piece of hardware, for example a retro handheld device, having a mini PC will allow you to expand the performance to meet your budget. And for the most part, you'll get the most bang out of your buck if you go this route. So we'll talk a little bit about the mini PCs that are available, as well as the one that I chose for this specific video, and then in general how to set something like this up in the first place, and then we'll look at performance of the PC that I used. Now if you've ever seen any of those videos from someone like ETA Prime where they show you how to take an old school PC and put it together and turn it into an emulation machine, this video is really no different from that. I will focus a lot on the setup part of it and kind of go over a couple of the issues that may come up, and I'll throw my own spin on the whole concept here at the end as well. So without any further delay, let's just jump right into it. Okay, let's get started talking about your mini PC options. Now the Super Console X mini PC that I showed off in that earlier video uses a Larkbox Pro. And this little computer has been around for about a year now and it has a pretty good processor in it. And as you can see here, it's running for about $180 on Amazon right now. If you go to AliExpress, you can find it for even cheaper. Now while I really love the performance on this mini PC, one of the things that bothers me about it is that I think it's actually a little bit too small. It's about the size of a Rubik's Cube, but one of the main downsides with it is that you have to use a USB hard drive. And all of a sudden, this mini PC isn't so mini anymore because it's connected to a USB hard drive. So I wanted to look around for other mini PCs that actually allow you to install a second hard drive. And the device I settled on is this one here, the Geek Plus Mini PC. Now this processor is not quite as fast as the one that you find in the Larkbox Pro, but what I like about this PC is that it has additional space for another hard drive. And you can see it's listed here for just under $200, but the price seems to fluctuate quite a lot when you look at this one. I've seen it go down as far as $160, so make sure that you check those online prices. One of the nice things about shopping for these mini PCs on Amazon is that it only takes a couple days for them to arrive. So not a lot of frills when it comes to unboxing this device. This here is the connector that we're going to use for that other hard drive. More on that later. This is a pretty bare bones kit. It basically comes with a power supply and the PC itself. What I like about this one is that it has five USB ports as well as two HDMI out, a slot for micro SD if you want to add additional storage, as well as dual gigabit ethernet ports. There's some ventilation on the sides, but I'm pretty sure this does not have any active cooling, so it's going to be a silent PC. Now to get inside, we're going to have to remove the feet from the PC, and then use a precision screwdriver to remove these four screws. It's a little bit tricky to get the bottom cover out. I found the easiest way to do that is to take a small screwdriver head like this, and then pull that cover out using some leverage. Okay, so internally we do see there is no fan here. And here is that M.2 storage here, 128 gigabytes. This is the storage component for the Windows 10 operating system that comes on this device. Unfortunately, you can't see a lot of the other components. They're on the other side of this board. But yeah, overall, this is what it looks like on the bottom. Now, some computers actually allow you to boot from the micro SD card. This means that you could load something like Botticera up on the SD card itself and then run the system from there. Unfortunately, this computer doesn't have that support within the BIOS. Your next option could be a USB thumb drive like this one, and I made an entire video about how to run Botticera on one of these. But unfortunately, just like with the micro SD card, even though the BIOS does have an option to boot from a USB hard drive, I actually couldn't get it to work. But for my use case, that's all good because I planned on putting a hard drive inside this anyway. Now going back to that Super Console X mini PC, now this USB hard drive could actually be taken out of its shell and then just placed directly into this device too. So essentially you could potentially buy this hard drive on its own, and then remove it from its original case, hook it up using this connector, and then plug it into the computer. But for this video, I want to go DIY. I want to do the whole thing from scratch. So instead, you could get something like this, a one terabyte hard drive for under $50, and then we could use something like this to load Botticera and all of our retro games. Now me, I'm a big cheapskate, so I actually had this old 2.5 inch hard drive sitting around. This is actually an old PS4 hard drive that I had upgraded several years ago. So this part's pretty easy. All you have to do is fasten the hard drive to this bottom panel. After that, plug it into the wiring harness, 
and then plug the other end into the PC itself. And this is what it's going to look like when you've plugged it in. And that's it, you've actually installed the hard drive at this point. So let's screw this cover back on the bottom, and then reapply those feet, and we're ready to rock. Before we get started, let's do a quick size comparison. So this is the Larkbox Pro that we were showing earlier, and it really is tiny. And it almost makes this other mini PC look big. So let's give you a real world example. Here is a wonderful Retro Game Core mug, and as you can see, it's about the same size. So that's a good real world example of how small this PC actually is. Now in terms of controllers, I would highly recommend using a wired controller. Now I'm a big fan of wireless controllers like anybody else, but I really love the fact that you can just plug in a wired controller and start playing immediately. And the latency is much lower on a wired controller than it would be any other wireless controller. So I actually recommend this one, which came with my Super Console X Mini PC. But you can buy it on its own for about $25-$30, and I'll leave a link in the video description below. That being said, if you have an Xbox controller or a PS4 controller, you can actually just plug those directly into this PC as well, and Botticera is going to recognize them, and they'll work fine. So yeah, you could totally buy your own controller, but at the same time, if you have one already, maybe think about using that one. Now we're going to use the Windows side of this mini PC to load up Botticera, which means we're going to need to have a USB keyboard in order to work within the BIOS. So if your main PC uses a Bluetooth keyboard, you're going to want to have something that has USB connectivity. And this little mini keyboard is the one that I typically use with mini PC setups, because it has a built-in trackpad, it's unobtrusive, but it also has a rechargeable battery, as well as the USB dongle. Now one of the funny things I found about this PC is because the fact that these ports are on two different edges, it actually looks really weird when you have both an Ethernet cable plugged in as well as your power and HDMI. And so because of that I decided to use a USB Ethernet cable here, so that way I can get the Ethernet connectivity without having that whole double port thing going on. So this is how I set it up myself. Now speaking of things that bothered me, it kind of bothered me too that the logo was on its side in relation to the, where the ports are. Now this is something that I obviously got over very quickly. But at the same time, I really wish that they had rotated this logo. Okay, enough nitpicking here, let's turn it on. So when you first boot it up, it's going to get you through the entire Windows 10 walkthrough. It's going to take a few minutes just to set everything up, but after that, you're going to be here on the Windows 10 desktop. First thing I like to do is to go into the This PC and then check the properties, and then just verify that the components are here or what I expected. And sure enough, it has the J3455 CPU and 6 gigs of RAM. And as you see, it's running the 64-bit version of Windows 10 Home. So let's install a few apps. I'm going to use this website here called nightnight.com. This one's going to allow you to choose just a bunch of standard apps and then install them all at once. So things like Google Chrome or Discord or Steam, all of these are available immediately on this. Now another piece of software that's going to be an essential component is this one here called Belena Etcher. We're going to use this one to flash the Botticera image on that other hard drive. So be sure to download and install this program. Next, you're going to want to download the Botticera image, which you can get directly from the website, and just grab the one that says Standard Desktop Laptop. You may get a connection error initially, just go into the Advanced Settings and then proceed to the download. Once that download's complete, let's open up Belena Etcher, and we're going to select Flash from File. Then, navigate to wherever you saved Botticera, and then select that. And then under Select Target, we're going to click on this button here, and then select this Show to Hidden dropdown. Here we're going to grab that hard drive that we installed earlier. It's a Toshiba and it's 500 gigs. After you select it and then hit flash, it's going to come up with a big old warning. It's going to say, do you really want to do this onto a hard drive? And you say, yeah man, I want to do it. It's going to take a couple minutes to flash the Botticera operating system onto this hard drive. But after that, you're done. Theoretically, you never have to go onto the Windows side ever again after this point. That being said, if you have a mini PC, you might as well use the Windows side for things as well. Either way, let's restart the PC and get it loaded onto Botticera. And this is the moment where it's really important to have a USB keyboard plugged into the PC. So as soon as the logo appears, you're going to want to hit a button here. It's either going to be Delete or F9 or F2. Just experiment and see which one works. It's typically going to be Delete though. And this is your BIOS menu. Within here, you want to go into the Boot tab, and then find wherever it says Hard Disk Drive Priorities and then select that one here, and then change your boot options from the Windows Boot Manager to the other hard drive that you have installed. So I'm changing it out so that boot option number one is the Toshiba hard drive. That means it's going to boot to Botticera first, and if that's not available, it's going to go into Windows. From there, just go ahead and save and exit, and then it'll expand the partitions on the hard drive, and then boot into Botticera. Now Botticera comes preloaded with a couple freeware games. That's why it looks like there's Super Nintendo and Nintendo games in here. 
We'll take care of those later. First, we're going to address the fact that you may not have any sound when you first start up Bodicera. And typically this happens when you use HDMI as your sound output. So if you go into the system settings menu and you go into audio output, you can see that there's multiple HDMI options available, but sometimes it's very hard to figure out which one to use. So there's an easy trick to figure that out. What you want to do is go into the Kodi media setter here in the main menu. And then within Kodi, go into the settings and then in the system settings and then select audio and then audio output device. Now within here, you can see all the same HDMI options here at the bottom, but you can see that one of them looks a little bit different than the other. And that's because that's the one that's probably in use. This is the one that I have hooked up to my capture card. So I'm going to remember that HDMI 1 was the one that looked weird. From there, I'm going to close out of Kodi and go back into Botticera. I'm going to go back into the audio output option, and I'm going to select HDMI 1. At that point, you need to reboot the system, and just like that, the audio will start working. Okay, so now that the audio works, let's clean up how the actual system looks. If you go into the UI settings, you'll see that by default, there's only one theme available for Botocera. So let's add some new themes. I'm going to go into updates and downloads, and then themes. And within here, you're going to find a bunch of different theme options. I would just recommend experimenting. Look at all the thumbnails and decide on a few to download. Okay, so while these themes are downloading, let's go ahead and add our own games to the Botocera image. Now the easiest way to move your games onto Botticera is to put them on a USB flash drive or a USB hard drive. Once you've got them on that USB hard drive, plug that into your mini PC, and then in the main menu of Botticera, which is where I'm at right here, go ahead and press F1 on your USB keyboard. This is going to bring up a file explorer window, and within here you should be able to find your external hard drive. Here's mine right here, a Samsung hard drive. Now just go into wherever your ROMs are stored, here's all my Super Nintendo games. And then what I like to do is right click and then choose select all and then select copy and then go over to the ROMs folder on Botticera, find the Super Nintendo folder, and then typically I will also delete that freeware game while I'm in there. And then finally I will paste those Super Nintendo games right in. And that's basically it. You just move over your games from your external hard drive over to the Botticera hard drive. Let's do the same thing here, but with NES games. So I'm going to select all, copy, go into ROMs, then NES delete that freeware game, and then paste the rest in. And you can just keep on doing this for whatever systems you have. For example, I want to throw a couple GameCube games on here for testing. So I'm going to copy some of those GameCube games from my external hard drive, and then move them into the GameCube folder, and so on and so forth. And it'll take you a few minutes to get everything set up, but once you're done, that's it. And finally, the last thing you want to do is move over BIOS files. These are system files that your device needs in order to run specific systems. And I can't tell you where to find a BIOS pack, but if you Google it, you should be able to find what you need. And this is the same process, but instead of moving it into the ROMs folder, go over to the BIOS folder and then paste all of those in. Okay, we're ready to rock. So let's go ahead and close this window. And you can see while we were doing all that, all of the themes downloaded and installed. So if you go in and update games list, now you can see all the games that we've moved over to Botticera. Additionally, we can go into the UI settings and change our themes. So this is always a fun thing to do, is just kind of try out all the different themes and see which one you like the best. And a lot of these Botticera themes look really good. So the next thing I recommend doing is scraping all of your box art. That's going to provide all the media for your games. So for this, just go into the main menu, then Scraper, and then I would recommend setting up a ScreenScraper.net account, which is going to allow you to scrape more easily, and then just start scraping all your missing media. Now depending on how many games you have, this may take several hours. But as you can see, once you're done, you're going to have nice box art and videos and things like that. And it's going to make a lot of these different themes come alive. So that's really the majority of the setup that I would recommend doing when you first get started. Move all your games over, add those BIOS files, grab some themes, and then scrape all the box art. Now when I do testing, I like to see how many frames per second are running on all of my games. And that's actually a system-wide setting that I can set up in Botticera. Let me show you how to do that in case you're interested. Go into System Settings and then select Developer, and then Show Frame Rate. This is going to give you that weird pink text that you've been seeing when you navigate through the menus, but it's also going to give you the frame rate in all the emulators. So as you can see on the top right of this GameCube game, it's showing me the frame rate so I can get a good idea of how well each of these games play. Now when it came to performance of this specific system, GameCube was about the upper limit of this mini PC. And not every GameCube played well, but games that are on the lower end of the emulation spectrum, for example Mario Kart Double Dash, they played just fine. 
Now when you try to push the system to its limits and try to play something like F-Zero GX, one of the hardest games to emulate on GameCube, the frame rate would dip all the way down to something like 30 frames per second. And this game's supposed to play at 60 frames per second, so you can really feel that difference. It's basically playing like it's running through mud. So not quite an enjoyable experience with F-Zero, but most other GameCube games played okay. I had a similar experience with Wii. For the most part, none of these games played very well at all. So as I mentioned before, GameCube is the upper limit for this system in particular. Of course, if you want to pay a little bit more for a mini PC, you can definitely get something that's a little bit more capable. And for under $200, this is still not a bad setup. One thing to note here is this PC gets very hot. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that it doesn't have its own active cooling, so there's no fan inside. And you can see here, after about 20 minutes of playing GameCube, the internal temperature of this mini PC was 90 degrees Celsius. So you're not going to have any issue if you're playing some of the lower end systems, but if you're going to consistently play GameCube on this thing, these high temperatures may affect your CPU's performance over time. Okay, enough of the doom and gloom, let's talk about some other systems and how they play. So in general, all these old school systems, they're going to play great. Things like Nintendo and Super Nintendo are not going to have any problems. Mini PCs will run these systems so well that you don't even have to worry about what core they're running, because all of them are going to run at full speed. Now granted, this mini PC is probably a little bit of overkill when it comes to 16-bit systems. After all, you could probably just run that on a cheap $50 Android TV box. But all the same, I do take comfort in the fact that all my childhood favorites play really well on this mini PC, in addition to systems all the way up to GameCube. Now that being said, I did find that the Geek Plus mini PC didn't really handle Sega Saturn that well. Some of the more iconic games for this system, for example Nights into Dreams, only played at about 56 frames per second. So you would get these tiny little hiccups as you were playing every once in a while. And I had the same experience with Panzer Dragoon. So all in all, as long as you don't mind a little bit of slowdown with Sega Saturn, this might be an okay experience for you. I also noticed that some Sega Saturn games had weird glitching, for example here with Virtua Fighter. Now even though the Sega Dreamcast came out after the Sega Saturn, this one's actually a lot easier to emulate. I would recommend using the Recast standalone emulator for this system, because it runs really well on this system, and it also allows you to upscale to 1280x960 with no problems. So some of the easier games like Marvel vs. Capcom 2 play really well, but even some of the harder ones, like Virtua Tennis 2, still keep a steady 60 frames per second. I did find that this emulator did need to cache some of its 3D sprites before it started playing smoothly, but within the first couple minutes of playing, you're going to have no problems at all. So all in all, if you're a big Dreamcast fan, this little mini PC, which you can get for under $200, is going to run all of those like a dream. No pun intended. Okay, let's move over to PC now. I'm going to start with 2x resolution, just to start on the conservative side. And I have no frame skip on or any hacks or anything, and as you can see, it's running at a solid 60 frames per second. So let's bump it up to 3x. This is basically a 720p signal. And I would say that comfortably, you can play almost every PSP game with 3x resolution. This seems to be the sweet spot for PSP. On certain games, you can definitely pump it up to 4x. And of course, the God of War games are always hard to emulate, so those are only going to run at about 2x resolution. But overall, I would say that PSP runs great on this. And because the resolution of the PSP is very close to 16x9, it's going to completely fill up your TV with a beautiful image with no further tweaking required. So yeah, that's how the gameplay experience is going to work on Botticera. So let me show you how to get back to the Windows side. Unfortunately, it's not as easy as just pushing one button. What you have to do is restart your system, and then again when the system logo shows up, press the delete key, then swap out your boot option again so that it has the Windows Boot Manager as the number one priority. From there, just go ahead and save and exit, and then reboot the machine again. And there you go, we're back in the Windows side. So it is one extra step of going into the BIOS every time you want to swap between Windows and Botticera, but that's essentially how you would do it. Alright everyone, that's it for this video. I really just wanted to show you the fundamentals of getting Botticera to work on any mini PC. Now as I showed in previous videos, you could actually just put this on a USB thumb drive and plug it into the PC you have already. But if you're interested in maybe getting a mini PC that you can plug into your TV, or put in the kids room, or other options like that, I think the mini PC is the way to go. And over the past couple months now that I've been playing with PCs and running Botticera, I've really come to appreciate this option. I often think of computers as being this standalone device that you're supposed to do work on. It's something that you use to like browse the internet and write emails and things like that. But as we get further along in technology, and we start to consider our gaming consoles to be computers in and of themselves, I kind of like the idea of treating a computer like a gaming console in and of itself as well. 
And I think adding your own hard drive, filling it with Bodicera and your own games, is probably the easiest and most seamless way of going about this idea. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this a setup that you might consider? Or would you rather do something like buying the Super Console X Mini PC and just having everything done for you in the first place? Or better yet, are you interested in putting Bodicera on a USB hard drive and then plugging it into the PC that you already have? There's a lot of options out there for you, and I think the flexibility of Bodicera really makes this a fun experience. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.